I'm Dave Champion. The United States House of Representatives has impeached Donald Trump. That is momentous and not so momentous. The momentous side of this, of course, is that Donald Trump will be, historically speaking, the third president to be impeached by the House for all of history. The non-momentous part of this is I think it's pretty reasonable to assume there's going to be a quick and dirty, to call it a trial, I don't even think is a factually accurate statement. It's going to have the form of a Senate impeachment trial, but with the Republicans controlling the majority, I don't think it's really going to be much of an impeachment trial. And then all the Republicans are going to say not guilty, and that's going to be the end of it. How this whole convoluted process may or may not affect the 2020 elections. I certainly don't know because the American people always surprise me and generally not in a good way. What I want to talk about is that this may not be the only impeachment of Donald Trump as president. I think that's going to come as a shock to a lot of people on the right who imagine this is um, the Democratic Party's singular bite at the apple. They get one bite and then that's that. And they're, they're going to lose this one. I, I think the odds are overwhelming that Donald Trump is going to be acquitted in the Senate. So they're going to lose this one. I think from the perspective of most people on the right, case closed, that's it. Woohoo! Okay. Yeah, but that may not be the case. Okay. So you may be aware that there are multiple subpoenas for the tax records of Donald Trump, the Trump organization, before he became president. The subpoenas fall into two categories. One is from prosecutors in the state of New York. The other is from a House of Representatives committee. The United States Supreme Court has decided to hear Donald Trump's challenge to these two subpoenas. I'm not going to do a video on the legal questions concerning how I would think, based on my 20 years of studying law, the Supreme Court should rule on this. What I'm going to say is this. If the Supreme Court rules that either subpoena, it doesn't have to be both, um, if they rule that either subpoena is valid and enforceable against the books and records of Donald Trump for the years before he became president based on probable cause, then I'm going to guess we're going to see a second impeachment. The probable cause, there's numerous sources of probable cause for these warrants. The one I want to talk about is Michael Cohen testifying under oath that what Donald Trump would do, we'll use just arbitrary numbers for the sake of illustration. If a particular business venture was bringing in a million dollars a year and Donald Trump wanted a loan, he would tell the lender that the business is bringing in $1.5 million a year and he would submit evidence to the lender supporting that false claim. This is according to Michael Cohen. Then when Donald Trump was filing his tax returns, he would say that the same enterprise was only bringing in $650,000 a year, not a million. Okay. So under federal law, if the business was actually bringing in a million and Donald Trump claimed in a loan application it was making 1.5, that, that's a federal crime. If it was making a million dollars a year and he claimed on his federal income tax returns that it was making $650,000 a year, that's a crime. Okay. And Unlike what the Democrats are doing now with the House impeachment, these would be hard and fast statutory felonies. Okay? So if either entity gets their hands on Donald Trump's tax returns and it turns out that Michael Cohen's assertions under oath are factual, then we're likely to see a second impeachment. If Donald Trump wins the 2020 election and ends up as president again, more likely if, if they get the tax records and if Cohen's assertion and other people's assertions are factual, then we're likely to see a second round of impeachments. Impeachments of politicians are almost always political. That's no less true here, right? We know the Dems have an agenda and we know the Republicans in the Senate have an agenda. And what is factual, what is true, and what is just is not a part of the agenda of either team, okay? One is to hurt the guy who's on the opposite team. The other is to defend the guy who's on our team. Uh, what actually occurred, I'm not going to get into it in this video, what actually occurred is totally irrelevant to that process. But I did want you to know 
that no matter what side you're on, um, when Donald Trump is acquitted by the Republican-controlled Senate, if you're on the left, there may be a chance he's probably a good chance. If the tax returns are turned over to either entity, there's a good chance that Donald Trump will be impeached again. Likewise, if you're on the right and you're thinking, my guy got acquitted, woo, my guy. Okay, so don't get too excited because there is a chance Donald Trump will be impeached a second time. I thought this was all important to go into as we're looking at the current political impeachment landscape to understand what the future may hold depending on how things come down. Thanks for being here.